Recently in one of my Monday night live streams, which I'm doing every Monday night at five o'clock Pacific, I went over a few different examples of how to find the area between two curves, or, you know, a few examples of more than two curves. But either way, one of those examples that I wanted to show you on its own was how to find the area between two curves with respect to Y, because it can be really challenging when you're trying to integrate with respect to Y and also trying to find the area between two curves at the same time. I know for me personally, that was something I really had a hard time with when I was learning integral calculus. So I wanted to show you this example. And although this is one specific example, the methods that we're gonna be going over in this video can be applied to all sorts of different examples that you would run into especially those where you have to find the area between two curves by integrating with respect to y. So if that is something that you want to get a little bit better understanding of and hopefully be more comfortable with, be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I am sure that this video is going to help you do exactly that. Well, anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the example and I'll uh, show you what I'm talking about. Sketch the region enclosed by the curves, then find the area of the region. So, you know, this, this problem does kind of lay out the general steps that we want to go through. Really any sort of problem where they say find the area between two curves and they give you a few different curves or, you know, what you may see is find the area between a curve and a line or find the area between a curve and one of the axes or between, you know, the X and the Y axis really all those are gonna follow this exact same process. So this exact same process that we're gonna be going through, all these steps are the exact same steps you wanna go through for any sort of, you know, find a region bounded by some curves or find the region between two curves or whatever the case is. It's all the exact same process. And this problem kind of gets at that, which is the first thing that you always wanna do when you're doing any of these types of problems is to sketch the curves you're dealing with, sketch the region that you're dealing with. Uh, that's really gonna help make things a lot easier. And the reason is, it's gonna help make it a lot easier for you to figure out which direction you wanna integrate with respect to. And we'll get into that a bit more in a minute. But first thing you always wanna do is sketch the regions. So that's generally going to start with uh, just like a, you know, a 2D X, Y axis graph of whatever, you know, situation is being described. Now that really is kind of the case for most things in math, to be honest, especially calculus, but um, especially with these, it really helps to draw it out um, because it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to see if you should be cutting up your region with horizontal or vertical rectangles. And I'll talk a bit, a bit more about what I mean by that in a minute. But what you wanna do is graph these two functions. So first of all, um, it would probably help to, you know, solve each of these equations for the same variable so that you could graph it. There's kind of a couple different ways we could go about this function right here, 4x plus y squared equals 12. Uh, we could solve it for y, we could solve it for x. Either way, we could then kind of proceed to graph it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and solve for y because that's probably the standard way that you would see things like this solve for. So first of all, we'll minus the 4x over to the other side, giving us y squared equals 12 minus 4x. Um, and then we can take the square root of both sides, giving us y equals the positive and negative square root of 12 minus 4x. Um, so then if we want to kind of think about the transformations or translations of a parent function, what this is going to kind of rework into is positive and negative square root of four times, actually, let's say negative four would get pulled out here. And then we'd have X minus three within here. So basically all this is saying is we have our parent function, which if you think of the parent function square root of X, taking this tells us how we can, uh, what transformations we can apply to this parent function in order to graph this. Um, that's, probably a topic for another video, um, you know, doing translations and transformations. Uh, if you need a refresher on that, I definitely check into that. That's a, a little bit off topic of, you know, finding the area between two curves. So I'm not going to get into that in too much more detail. Um, but for now, we'll just say that this is, you know, what we'll use to graph this function. So the parent function of square root of x uh, just looks kind of something like that. Of course, I haven't labeled my axes yet. So it's not particularly interesting, but um, basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to shift this square root of x to the right three units, and we're going to have to um, 
let's see here. We're going to have to compress it by squish it down by a factor of uh, negative four, actually. So yeah, basically that's going to create a square root kind of over, you know, three units to the right and then compressed to a factor of negative four in the X direction is going to flip it. Um, and it really isn't too important at this point, um, like how uh, exactly like how this is uh, labeled. So I'm not going to worry about labeling my axes at this point. Like I'm not going to worry about where this function intersects with the Y axis quite yet. Um, and in fact, that's really actually not going to be super important at any point. Um, because first thing we're doing here is just sketching a graph. Really, this just needs to be a very rough sketch. We don't need to, you know, figure out the exact points that this entire function is going to go through. We really just need a rough sketch here. So doing that is going to give us something like this. And then this function here, y equals x, that just gives us a line that goes like this, like that. So this is good enough, even though it's not labeled, it's not a particular, particularly interesting graph of this function or, you know, not detailed, not a very helpful graph. We really just need a rough sketch because really all we're trying to do is figure out the general shape of the region that we're trying to uh, find the area of, which we can see here. The area that is trapped in between these two functions is right here. So we have this area right here that we're going to be taking the the area of and that's really all we were trying to get at here we weren't like i said we weren't trying to uh, get a super detailed sketch of what this looks like so once you have sketched the region that you're trying to find the area of what you want to do then is think about which direction we want to integrate this area and that's really just going to come down to one simple question okay this is really uh, something that a lot of people have a hard time with but there's a much simpler way to kind of frame it all you need to think about is do we want to take horizontal chops of this area or do we want to take vertical chops of this area? So if we imagine you just want to what I typically do is I just imagine each option. If we were to take horizontal chops versus vertical chops, what would that look like? Well, actually, let me do this here. Perfect. OK, so this should be, you know, good enough to show what I'm trying to show here. If we imagine <clears throat> taking a horizontal chop, chop through this area, you know, really when, it, when you think about integration, all you're doing when you're integrating a function is you're, you're creating some area, just like we've created here, and you're chopping it up into a bunch of infinitely thin rectangles. So just imagine this red line that I've drawn here that I'm moving around. Imagine that as a rectangle, a super, super, super thin rectangle. And as we move it, if we if we imagine our horizontal chop or our horizontal slice, the horizontal slice is going to move vertically, right? So as we move our horizontal slice vertically through this region that we've shaded green here, think about what would be basically the top or the bottom function of our integration, or in this case, the left and the right function. When you're looking at a horizontal slice, it's always going to be left and right. When you're looking at a vertical slice, it's going to be top and bottom. So as we look at where this red line that's moving vertically here, this horizontal red line, where does that intersect with the two functions that we've graphed or sketched, the two white functions that we've sketched here? Well, you can see all the way through the right edge of this green region. So like right here is always, you know, where this red line intersects with this rightmost edge of our green region here is always the exact same function. It's always this y equals plus or minus square root of negative four uh, times x minus three. It's always that same function. And then similarly, on the left edge, the left side, the red line intersects with this left edge of this green region here always with the same function, right? This whole left edge here is kind of portrayed by this function right here, x equals y. So basically, if we were to take a horizontal slice through this thing, we're always going to use the same function for our right edge, which is this one. And we're always going to use the same function for our left edge right along here, which is this one. So based on that one fact right there, 
we always have the same function as our right edge. We always have the same function as our left edge. That is a huge clue that probably taking the horizontal slice is the way to go. Because if we take the horizontal slice, we're going to be able to put this down into one single integral, right? Now, if we think about the vertical slice, so think about now doing our line vertically. Okay, so if we now go through this green region with a vertical slice, notice what happens. For this whole portion from here over to the left edge of this green area here, this line, this x equals y line is the top, the top of our region. This red line intersects with the top of our region with that function. But then as soon as we get to this point right here, all the way to the right edge, the top, basically the top of this green region where it intersects with this vertical red line is now given by this function here. So basically to the, the left of this section here, we have a different top of our green region than we have over here. So as a result, if we were to, to find the area of this region using a vertical slice, we would have to split this into two separate integrals because our top function is different to the left and to the right of where this line is currently. So as a result, we want to do horizontal slices. So we want to imagine cutting this, this green region up into a bunch of infinitely thin horizontal slices. Okay, so now when we're doing that, knowing that fact, we can go ahead and get our integral set up. So getting our integral set up is going to be using the formula that is on my integral calculus cheat sheet. Again, link is down in the description below if you want to check that out or the pinned comment should be a huge help to you as you work through integral calculus. But now we want to set up our integral and our integral is just going to be, uh, well, we'll we'll just set up um, the function that we're going to integrate first. We'll worry about the bounds of that next. So the first thing we want to do is think about as we imagine this horizontal slice going through our function, what is the top and the bottom of this region the whole way through, or in this case, the left and the right. And like we said before, this line right here is always going to be the left of our region. And then this parabola, this sideways parabola, which is given by uh, this other function here, is always going to be the right edge of our function. So basically we know this is always the right and this is always the left. Uh, when you're slicing your region horizontally, what you want to keep in mind is instead of thinking of it as the top and the bottom, like I said, think of it as the right and the left. This is kind of weird, but the you want to treat the right, the right side. So this parabola here or this sideways parabola, you want to think of that as the top of the region because it is in the positive x direction, right? As x goes off to the right, it's positive. So basically this function has a higher has higher x values than this function does. So we want to think of this as our top function and then this as our bottom function. So when we set up our integral, because whenever you're trying to find the in the area between two curves, it's always just going to be the top function minus the bottom function. Well, the top function is going to be this right one this one right here, and our bottom function is going to be this one. However, here's the problem. What we need to do first, since we're going in the horizontal direction, we need to solve both of these functions for x. We solved it for y previously because that's typically easier to graph, but we need to solve it in terms of x now because what we're going to be doing is integrating it with this horizontal slice, which means if we're treating this as our top function, the point that we want to kind of look at for this, this slice right here is going to be based on the x value right here and the x value right here. So we need to solve both of these for x in order to integrate that. So what we're going to do, we're going to minus the y squared over to the right, giving us 4x equals 12 minus y squared. And then we can divide both sides by 4, giving us x equals uh, 3 minus 1 fourth y squared. Okay, so now this is our top function and this is our bottom function. So we would just do the integral of 3 minus 1 fourth y squared and then minus our bottom function. In this case, our bottom function is just x equals y. Since our bottom function is just one, one variable here, we don't need to worry about it, but normally you would want to make sure to put parentheses around your entire bottom function. So basically you're doing your entire top function minus your entire bottom function. 
And then you would just put dy. Since our functions here are in terms of y, we're going to put a dy here. Now we just need to figure out the bounds of your integral. Well, the bounds of your integral are always going to be basically when you're integrating horizontally. It's going to be the very bottom tip of this region and the very top tip of this region. So we need to figure out basically where these two functions intersect. And then whatever those y values are is going to be the bounds of our integral here. So to figure that out, to figure out what y values make these functions intersect, all we have to do is set these two equations equal to each other and solve for y. So we would just have to do 3 minus 1 fourth y squared equals y and solve for y. Well, to do that, we would want to get all of our since we have a quadratic here, we have a y squared term, a y term, and a constant term. We just want to get all of our terms over on one side of the equation here. So we would minus the y over to the other side, plus 3 equals 0. And then we could try and factor this out. Um, this is going to be probably kind of difficult to factor. So what we could do instead is just use the quadratic equation. So the opposite of b, the opposite of lowercase b, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So negative one squared, opposite of lowercase b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four a c all over two a. So y will be these, um, which is gonna give us um, one plus or minus one minus four times minus one fourth is positive one times three is three. So one plus three square root of one plus three is square root of four. And then all over two times negative one fourth is negative one half. So that'll be one plus or minus two all over negative one half, which will give us um, 1 plus 2 is 3 divided by negative 1 half is negative 6 and 1 minus 2 is negative 3 1 minus 2 is negative 1 divided by negative 1 half is going to be 2 so basically this will intersect at y equals 2 and this will intersect at y equals negative 6 so the bounds of our integral are going to be negative 6 up to 2 so now this is going to be the integral that we're going to want to evaluate in order to find the area between those two curves. So just to kind of simplify this a bit, we would just, you know, put the negative sign through the parentheses there. Then we could integrate this using the power rule. So that's going to give us 3y minus raise the power by 1, making it y to the third, divide by the new power, making it negative 1 12th out here and then one half y squared. So that just uses the power rule. And then we would just evaluate this from negative six to two. Um, so I'll leave, I'll leave this for you to go ahead and finish, but you would basically just plug in two for y and then minus plugging in negative six for y. and then find the difference between those two things. And then that would be the area between those two curves. So um, really at this point, it's just a matter of plugging that into a calculator essentially. Um, so I'll leave that to you, um, but that, that would give you kind of that final number, which represents the area between those two curves. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below. And like I said, this was one of the topics covered on my integral calculus cheat sheet, my calculus two study guide. If you want to learn more about that, there is a link down in the description where you can get more info and go get your copy right now. It's available for instant download. It'll give you a PDF that you can print out or download and just have on your computer. But I think you'll get a lot of use out of that. So go check that out. And if you want to keep learning about integrals, I've made lots of other videos on that. Just go ahead and click on one of those over there and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.